Beruchim Haboim. Welcome everyone. We're about to begin Be'ezras Hashem together on Daf Kuf Dalit Amud Beis, the last few words of the Amud. The Gemara is discussed in Maleches Ksiva. Says the Gemara, Tano Neskaven Lichtoiv Ois Achas Veolo Biyodoi Shtayim Chayiv. The Gemara brings that Bryce is saying that if a person intended to write one Ois, and then it comes out two oisi ois, he's going to be chayiv. Now we know if a person intends to throw an object to amois in the Rishus HaRabim, and it goes down in Amos the Rishus HaRabim, he'll be potter. So why over here, if he intends to write one ois, and he ends up writing two ois, will be chayiv? So you have to say that over here, we're talking about he's trying to write a ches. But in order to write a ches, he intends to write two zayinin. Only what? He leaves out the roof of the ches, leaving the two zayinin. On that, the Bryce says, Chayiv, ask the Gemara, Vehatnan, Potter. Our Mishnah says in the same scenario that a person intends to write a ches and instead he writes two zayinin, he's Potter. Answers the Gemara, Lokashio, Hod the boy ziyuni, Hod the boy ziyuni. Our Mishnah is talking about a case where he needs the crowns of the Zion. In other words, he's writing in a Sefer Torah. And therefore, it requires the crowns to be written on, the, on top of the Zion, just like all of the letters of Shatnez Gez gets, and one of those letters is Zion, that requires crowns. So, and then when he writes these letters of Zion, they're missing then the crowns, and therefore he's not yet Chayiv. However, in a case where he's just writing the two letters, Two zayinin. He intends to write ches to write two zayin to make the ches, but he leaves out the roof. So now you don't need crowns, and therefore he's going to be held accountable for writing two letters on Shabbos. The Gemara now brings kosov ois achas no trikin. The Mishnah says if a person writes one ois, but he makes let's say an apostrophe on it or a dot on top of it, so the machloik is whether he's chayev for that or not. Rabbi Yehoshua ben Beser machayev vechachomim poitrin. Rabbi Yoshua ben Becerra says that this is like writing two letters because it has significance. When he writes a samech and an apostrophe, he knows it means simen. Or pe and apostrophe means posuk. And therefore it has significance. It's choshuv to be considered to be a molach of The chom say, no, it's not yet two letters. It doesn't have chashivus. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Yoichanon mishum Rabbi Yoisi ben Zimro. Minayin leloshon natriko in minhatar. Where do we know that we find Notricoin, this type of abbreviations in the Torah. The more explains, Shinemar brings in the Posuk, Ki of Hamoin Goyim Nisatika. Kishboko says to Avram Avinu, I will make you, I'll give make you into a father of the Hamon Goyim of the multitudes of the nations. So the Gemar brings the following Drosha. Av stands for Av Nisatika. Le'umois, I will give you and make you an av to the nations. Beis is bochur nesatich abum. I gave the nations, I made you a choice one amongst the nations. Then the Gemara Darshan is the word hamoin, the multitudes. Chaviv, hey, instead of Darshan the letter hey, it's with a ches, which you find before that did it similar, and we can make such a drasha of chaviv nesatich abumois. I made you chaviv cherished. Amongst the nations, Melech Nesatich Umais. I made you a king to the nations. Vosik Nasitich Umais. I made you distinguished amongst the nations. Nemon Nesatich Umais. I made you a Nemon, somebody who is considered to be a trustworthy one amongst the nations. Rabbi Yochanan Didei Omar. Rabbi Yochanan, who quoted before Yoshua ben. Rabbi Yosi ben Zimro himself brings no trikon from the Torah. Anoichi, the Posig, Anoichi Hashem Elokech Hashem Otei Sicha Me'eret Mitzrayim Mibes Avodim. When Rabbi Kesh Baruch Hu then declares at Har Sinai, Hashem says, Anoichi Hashem Elokech Hashem, I'm Hashem, your God. No trikon, instead of saying Ani, it says Anoichi. The Gemara Darshan's Ano Nafshi Kasafis Yahavis. I myself, Hashem says, wrote and gave the Torah. Ike de Amre, Anoichi, 
sorry, Rabbon Amri, Amiro Niimo Kisivo Yahivo. A pleasant statement was written and given. Don't think that Hakash actually wrote. Rather, Hakash word was written in the Aseris Hadibrois. Ike da Amre, though those explain that Anoichi is actually the Mafreya. Yehiva Kesiva, it was given and written. Naemonin Amore, Amre. And its statements are reliable. And therefore, these are coming from the Dvar Hashem, the statements of Hashem. The Gemara now brings the other notrikum we find in the Torah. This one regards to Bilam HaRosha. When the Malach comes to Bilam, he says to him, Why did you hit your female donkey? The Bey Abinosin Amre Ki Yoreit Haderech Lenegdi. After all, the Malach says to Bilam, You hastened the Derech to go against me. The Gemara explains, Yora. Ra'osa and Natsa, the word Yorait, is abbreviations for the donkey, female donkey, was fearful. It was also saw the Malach, and then it also turned to the side. The Gemara brings another Natrikon in regards to the Korban of the Oimer, which is a barley offering brought on the second day of Pesach. It said, Devei Rabbi Shmuel Tano, Carmel, referring to Carmole. Carmel is referring to the Karmole, the full pillows of the barley, which were indeed ripe and juicy for them to pound in order to make the flour for the Oimer offering. The Gemara brings another Nitrik, and we find in Tanakh, Rabbi Acha Bar Yaakov Omar, Vuhu Kalalani, Klola Nimretzis. Here it's referring to Shimi Ben Geiro, who cursed David HaMelech as David HaMelech was fleeing for his life. Shimi Ben Geiro. He threw dirt at him and he said the following. He said, A klola nimretzes. No trikon is nimretzes is noyev hu. He's an adulterer. Moavi hu. He comes from Moab, from Rus. Rotseach hu is a murderer. Tsorer hu is an enemy. Toyeva hu. He is abominable. And here it says that Dabra Melech told his people, not to put him to death, but he waited until he was, before he died, to put him to death. And his reaction was that HaKadosh Baruch Hu sent this Klola Min HaShomayim. And it says over there in Chazal that he became the regal Revi as a result of his Emunah Bar Hashem. Here it goes on to say another Nautrikin, Rav Nachim Bar Yitzchok Omar, Man Nidabr Man Nitzdadok. Yuda, when he's then being antagonized and accused by Yosef HaTzadik, he declares, what are we to then say and how can we then justify ourselves? Then he goes and approaches Yehuda. Sorry, Yehuda goes and approaches Yosef. And what he meant to say is, Nechoinim anachni. Tzadik is darshan as following. Nechoinim anachni. We are correct. Tzadikim anachni. We are righteous. Taharim anachni. We are pure rakim. Dakim, sorry, Anachnu, we're innocent, Kedoshim, Anachnu, we're holy. The Gemara now brings a final Mishnah in the Perik, and this Mishnah goes back to the concept of Shkogos. When a person does a Malacha, we know if he does it Bishoigeg, he's going to be high of a Korban Chatos. And if he does that Malacha a second time, even though he does the malacha twice, but it's under one, uh, one forgetful period, one helem echot. He's only giving chayiv one chatos. However, if he has a yedia in between the two malachas, he does the same malacha twice, but in between he realizes that it's a malacha, that it's Shabbos, he's then going to hold accountable twice. So our Mishnah says, HaKoyse shte oisios b'shte halomos. Our Mishnah says that a person writes two oisios, but in two different forgetful periods. In other words, he writes one ois, not knowing, let's say, it's Shabbos. Then he realizes that it's Shabbos, and then he forgets again that it's Shabbos, and he writes a second ois. So our Mishnah now has a machloikis. Do we say the idea in the middle of the knowledge that it's Shabbos separates the two shiurim, 
the chetzi shear of one ois and the chetzi shear on the second ois or not? Says the Mishnah, before it goes into the deos, it says, even in a case where a person writes one ois in the morning and one ois in the evening, right, or the later, later afternoon, here we're assuming over here that even if he did not actually know that he it was Shabbos in between, but the time span is enough to then be assumed that he should know, and therefore he'll be held accountable as if it's he writing two oisios with a two helomois with the knowledge in between that he wrote in between writing that it's indeed Shabbos. So we have over here. Rabbi Gamliel says he's going to be held as responsible for Korban Chatos, even though he has a Yediyah in between, whereas the Chachomim say that he's going to be potter, the Yediyah is Mechalik. And that's how the Gemara explains. But my Kamiflugi, what's the Machloikis for, for Rabbi Gamliel to say he's going to be Chayiv for a Korban Chatos by writing these two Oisios? Or according to the Chachomim, why would he be potter if indeed he writes these two Oisios? Says the Gemara, Rabbi Gamliel, Sover ein yediyah l'chetzi shir. We're not mekil when it comes to the yediyah. When do we say the yediyah is mechalek? When it's between two different chatos. Then a person is held then as a, as a chumrah. As a, as a chumrah, we say that a person is going to then be chayiv twice for the first malacha. And then the, the yediyah then is mechayiv him a second time for the second malacha that he did. But we're not going to be making and say if he did a chatzi shir, he writes one ois, and then he has a yediyah, that that itself is going to then be a yediyah that's mechalek, whereby he won't be chayef for the second ois. Rather, we'll say, it's as if that yediyah is not going to be mechalek, and as if he wrote two oisi ois together, and he's going to be chayef chatos according to Rabbi Gamliel. Rabbon and Savre, Yesh Yedi Lachati Shir. Rabbon and Savre say that the same way that the Yedi is Mechalik between two full Malacha, so too it's going to be Mechalik within the Shiurim of the same Malacha. And therefore, when he then has a Yedi after writing one Ois, that it's Shabbos, and then he forgets again that it's Shabbos and he writes a second Ois, according to the Chachamim, that will be Mechalik and he'll be Potter. Hadron Allah Chaboyne. The next parak begins speaking about other Malachos that a person will be chayef for on Shabbos, and it focuses in the beginning of Malachas Oireg, weaving. The way we, the weaving process is, is that there's a chassis, chassis strings, several chassis strings that are going along the length, we'll call it the horizontal way, then in between comes the Oireg string. There's one string that goes in between the or the chassis strings, and that is the weaving process. So the mission says, Rabbi Eliezer Oimer Haoreg Shloisha Chutin Betchila. If a person is going to start the weaving process and start, let's say, making a beged, then he has to have a minimum of three times that he's going to then be held accountable. In other words, he'll have to then th- throw across the Orev string. In three, three, three times, one and one to the end, a second time to the other end, and third time to the third end to make him liable. Va'achas ala ori, Rabbi Eliezer says, however, if it already is an ori, that means that it's already a beged, it's in the middle of that thing being processed, so just one time across, the ori across all of the, she, all of the shesi strings, that itself <clears throat> will be chayev. The Chacham argue and they say it's always going to be uh, um, and therefore it will be across once and across twice. Now it says over here or so is dafka that even if he's beginning the Beget is going to be with twice to make it Chayev but Besoif is Lav Dafka because Besoif here means even in the middle of the Beged, it's going to be twice. Because if it was really B'soif Soif, that means that if it's the end of the Beged, it would be the last, uh, let's say, weave, then even one weave would be Chayiv. That we saw on the previous Amud, that when it comes to being Mashlim, a Sefer, 
a person even writes one ois and he's mashing the Sefer Torah. It doesn't have to be at the end of the Sefer Torah. It could be in the middle. That itself has chashivus to mechaivim for ksiva and Shabbos. So too when it comes to Ariga. If he's going to be mashlim the beged, even one chut, that means one going across, would be sufficient to mechaiv him because that's a sheer chashuv in terms of completing that beged. The mission continues, Ha'oyse shte bate nirin, a person who makes shte bate nirin, this is another malacha b'fnei atzmoi, and this is the malacha of putting the loops around the the uh, shesi strings. We said before the shesi strings run across the lengthwise, several strings, <laughs> excuse me, and then we said well, there's an array string that then goes vertically through the shesi strings. Now, there's a system that enables the Chessy strings to then be lifted up. So they have the odd number strings with a loop around it that are lifted up, then enabling then the RF string to be thrown across, whereby it's going to then be in between all of those Chessy strings. So, and then if he does that one direction, on the other direction, he'll then pick up the even strings with the loops. So it says over here, Bichayiv for Malacha of Oise Shte Bate Nirin, where he places the two the loops over two of these strings, that's already going to be chayiv for that molacha. Benirin, Gemara will explain, <laughs> excuse me. Bakerois, the Gemara also explained this as well. Benapa, if it's going to be used, the shtebatinim of a napa or bekvara, napa is when a sieve for flour, bekvara is going to then take away the psoilis, also a, to- a form of borer, of making a of, of a of a sieve where it makes for things that are more gas, that are bigger pieces. Ubesal making weaving a basket. All of these are going to be chayiv. They're going to be a tolda of the melech of ha'isishte bate nirin. The mission continues. Va'atoyfer shte tfiros is another melacha, a person who will stitch two stitches. That's referring to going in and over, in and out. Which really is truly a one one tfira, but it's called shtei tfiros. He's going to be chayiv. Va'akare al manas lit for shtei tfiros, and a person who will tear in order to then stitch shtei tfiros, he will be chayiv. Says the Gemara, bringing a statement: Ki also Rabbi Yitzchok Tano Shtayim. Rabbi Yitzchok came and he taught the following brisa Shtayim that Rabbi Elazar says one is chayiv. For two chutim, that means again, one across and a second time the other direction across. Ask the Gemara, but our Mishnah teaches that Rabbi Leza is Mechaev when it's three, when it's across three different times, not twice. Answers the Gemara, Lokashio, it's not a difficulty because ho ba'alime ho bektine. That which he said in one place is talking about when it's a thick string, whereas the other place is talking about is a thin string. Some explain it in this way, while others explain it in another way. As follows. When it's thick strings, they explained, then if it's three, then it won't become undone. And that's what he said in the Mishnah. Because if thick, then they won't become undone. They won't become unraveled. But if it's two, they become unraveled because they're thick strings. And that's what he said in the Brisa. Ketine. If it's thin strings, tre nami lo satre. If it's tree, two, two rather, sorry, if it's two, then this is what he's saying in the Brysa rather, that two, if they're thin strings, then that's enough so that it will not become unraveled and therefore the bichai for that. Ba'amri lo lahagisa, another explaining the other direction, ketine tlosa yidi, if they're thin strings, then three are going to be recognizable and therefore be chashuv. And therefore, he said in the Mishnah, it has to be three strings. Tre lo yadiye, but two is already not recognizable and doesn't have chashivus. Alime, if they're thick strings, tre nami yadiye, then two would also be considered to be chashiv. And that's what he said in the Brisa. The Gemara now brings another Brisa. Tanya states, Ha'orev gimel chutin betchilo ve'echad ala orig chayev. One weaves three chutin, again, back and forth three times. In the beginning of making a beged, or a scenario where he actually does one chut that's already in a pre-existing uh, beged, in the middle of that beged, he's going to be chayev. 
whether it's in the beginning or we said Sof is Lav Dafka or any other part of the Beged, Beis Chutim. Then it's going to be two Chutim. Uvesofa Beis Chutim Beroichav Gimel Batei Nirin. If at the at the edge they made a a a, a shesi all the way across, then it will be also two Chutim, even though the Roichav of the Ariv will only be three Batei Nirin. So it's a very very narrow type of width. Ask the Gemara, so why is it then he would be chayv if it's going to be such a narrow width? After all, we know that that in order to then have a sheer minimum, it has to be meloisit, which is between the thumb and the, sorry, the, 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 the forefinger and the middle finger, in order to then, that length, and this is smaller than that width. So ask the Gemara, or ask the Bryce, how lama is it doime? The price continues, this is compared to the Oreg Tzil Katon, one who weaves a small belt. Beis Chutin Beroichav Gimo Bate Nirin, which has again the width of only Gimo Bate Nirin, and therefore two Chutin will be enough of a sheer to Mechaev. The Gemara now goes back to the original statement in this price of Oreg Gimo Chutin Betchilo. When he, some person weaves three chutin initially, beginning the beged, or ve'echad ala orig, or one on a pre-existing beged in the middle of the beged, chayev. So the Gemara points out, who's this Tana? Stama ki Rabbi Eliezer. This Tana is like Rabbi Eliezer. The Gemara now brings another b'risa. Tanya idoch ha'orig beiz chutin al hagas. If one weaves two chutin on a wide, large piece of beged, v'al ha'imra, or only on the sea, meaning the part that is only going to be the border, he's going to be chayiv. Rabbi Eliezer, oimah filu echad. Rabbi Eliezer says even just one, meaning if the beginning or even if the middle will only be one is enough, one chut to mechayiv. Ubesalfa shnei chutin. If it's on the edge, then we're saying the edge referring to then across the shesi, all the way across the beged. Then again, the width of shloshe batinim is going to milchayiv. Ask the Gemara, ask the Bryce the same question that the first Bryce mentioned. How can you be chayiv? After all, it's very narrow, it's a very narrow width. It's doime la oreg tzilzul katan. It's doime to a small belt which has chashivus, and therefore this also has chashivus. Shnei chutin al roichev gimel batei nirim. The Gemara now brings back the original statement of this brisa. Ha oreg beis chutin al hagas v'al emra chayiv. On either a gas or the emra, you need to have two chutin to be chayiv. Says the Gemara stam makir rabbanon. This stam tana is the rabbanon. The Gemara now brings the statement of the Mishnah, which he said is a melacha b'fnei atzmo. My benirin, what does it mean that it's done benirin? Omar abai tarte b'bote niro. Vechade beniro. So this benirin over here referring to that we said when the chassis strings are lifted up, it enables then the oreg to then be thrown across. Let's say you have the even or the even strings lifted up, then the Shes, then the R string is thrown across, then it goes in between all of the Shesi strings. On the other side, then the odd strings are picked up, and that's going to then be able to be thrown the R through the Shesi strings the other way, causing the weaving process. So the we said the strings are attached to a loop, that's the button nearing, and they're picked up by an apparatus, and that is what we're referring to over here as the benirin. So it's explained over here by Bai the Tarti Bate Niri Vachada Beniro. This is the Niro that we're talking about that enables the strings to be picked up with their loops. Bekeros, the Mishnah says, Bekeros, my Bekeros, ask the Gemar, what is the Keros? I identify this. Omarav Mitsuvisa. It's referring to another part of the loom. This part of the loom is a also a sort of apparatus that has. All of the chassis strings ultimately enter this, this uh, kiros and it enables this frame to then be 
and has like teeth that enable the strings to go into it so that the, the strings stay firm and um, are able to then stay tight. And therefore, this is the kiros. Vatoyfer-based tfiros, the Mishnah now says, is quoted as saying, if a person does another malacha, I didn't really explain in the Mishnah, I'll go back, because the Mishnah had said also, when we have Napo, Kavara, and Sal, you're going to be chayv. We said that's going to be chayv for a told of bot ase bote nirin, shte bote nirin. Here the Gemara does explain, but the, the concept in the Mishnah, why it's going to be a told of, of shte bote nirin, is unlike a loom, here they weave differently. They put, let's say, the reeds um, of different pieces of, we, of, of reeds across from each other, but in order to then hold them tight before they get woven together to make, let's say, a basket, so then a piece is put in between all of these string, all of these weaves, all of these reeds, rather, and it's done again the other direction to hold it tight. That process is almost like the loops of the, of the, of the loom, of the shte bati nirim, and therefore it's only a toldo of this molocha. The Gemara now brings the next molocha mentioned in the Mishnah, hakarei, ha based tfiros. So a person who then stitches two tfiros is going to be chayiv. Ask the Gemara, hotanina ba'avaz molocha. We already taught by avaz molochas in the seventh parak, the Mishnah said that this is one of the molochas, va'atoifer based tfiros. So what is the Mishnah over here coming to add? Answers the Gemara, Mishum the Kiboy le Mishnah Sefer, because it wants to teach the Sefer of the Mishnah. And that is, Vahakareya Amanas lit for based Firos. So, in order to then be an introduction to the, to the Malach of Hakareya Amanas lit for state Firos, it mentions being Toifer state Firos. Ask the Gemara, Toni Nami ha Toifer. But it was also taught in that Mishnah, in the seventh parak, that a person who is going to be Chayiv for Kare Amas lit for. So that also, Ketani Nami HaToyfer, that was also taught. So why is it teaching it again over here? Answer the Gemara, Vakare Ha Nami Tani Bovaz Molochah, the Gemara asks, Ele Mishin De Kiboy Le Misni Seifa, because it wants to teach a Seifa, referring to the next Mishnah. Hakare Bechamosava Al Meso, one who tears a garment for a dead family member, or because of his anger. So here, this is a really a widening of the concept of HaKarei Amenas Litfor. It's not Dafka Litfor, but maybe it's for a, for a constructive purpose. And therefore, the mission is going to discuss that in the Hemshech. Mishum Hochik Toni HaToyfer Shtei Tfiros. And that's why it begins by teaching HaToyfer Shtei Tfiros in order to then teach HaKarei Amenas Litfor and then ultimately the teaching HaKarei Bechamosa or HaKarei Al Meisoy.